So good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks to BW Business World to give me an opportunity to be here with you this morning. <clears throat> many of you know about radiation therapy, and many of you must have undergone radiation therapy. And uh, it was, of course, the x-rays were discovered in 1895 by Mr. Ronjan, and then uh, Curie's discovered radium, which was used for internal radiation in 1898, and then the progress of radiation therapy took place. <clears throat> I will take you in the next 15 minutes the journey from late 70s when I was a student at PGI Chandigarh to now and maybe I will give you a glimpse of what is going to happen in the next 10 years. <clears throat> so just an introduction, most of you know about it. But uh, radiotherapy is a type of cancer treatment. It is a part of the multidisciplinary treatment of cancer uh, these days. Uh, it uses uh, high intensity beams, gamma rays. Of course, they are not being used uh, around the world, but a lot of Indian centers use that. And the machine used is a cobalt machine. Uh, high energy X-rays used in linear accelerators. Then we have particles like electrons, protons. Uh, it can be given from outside, which is called external beam radiation, or from inside which is called brachytherapy. Uh, modern machines used are called linear accelerators. It damages the genetic material, and uh, the cancer cell doesn't recover, and the normal cells do recover. And it is either used in alone or in combination with surgery, uh, with surgery chemotherapy, or other uh, therapies. And in cancers which happen in India, uh, radiotherapy is used in more than 70% of these cancers. Uh, I will discuss uh, these areas which have been outlined, uh, how the progress has been made over the last few decades. On the left, you see a picture which was a radiation treatment planning, how it was done when I was a student at PGI in 1977. <clears throat> we used to, this is a case of cancer of the cervix. Uh, we knew by surface marking that where the cervix lies, and we used to pick up the bony landmarks. Uh, every patient was marked with a blue ink, 16 by 14. You know, one size fits all. And uh, just to check whether the mark is all right or not, we used to put lead wires and take an x-ray from front and from the side. And we were assured that yes, we are covering most of the area. And that is how the radiation was given. Over the years, we do like uh, which you see on the right, we use CT scans, MRIs, and PET scans to plan radiation. And this one size fits all has actually gone to personalized medicine where, because we know uh, the tumor is not spherical, it is not cylindrical, every body is not the same. So we individualize treatment, and when we individualize treatment by using CT scans, MRIs, and PETs, we know where the tumor is, we know where the normal structures are, we want to hit the tumor, we want to protect the normal structures, and this becomes highly accurate treatment. Uh, this is the journey which I was talking about. When I joined PGI Chandigarh in July 1977, deep X-ray machine uh, therapy machine was being used for treatment there, and gradually it was phased out, but it was still there for us to see. We moved on to cobalt machines, which were the, you know, the, the main machines during those days. Uh, then came accelerators, then came, you know, uh, refined accelerators, which we call cyber knife or tomotherapy on the right. Why this uh, development took place? Because deep X-ray machine had energy which was very low. And as the radiation was going inside the body, it went on reducing. So if you had a deeper tumor, the surface would receive higher radiation, and as the beam went inside the body, the radiation reduced. So we wanted machines with higher energy. And you see cobalt machine at a energy higher, accelerators have still higher energy. And just to recapitulate what you learnt in your school, one mega voltage is 1000 kilo voltage. The deep X-ray machine was 250 kilo volt, which was of course treating those days, but it was not sufficient to go deep. And then we uh, went higher. Uh, on the lower side, you have techniques. Uh, the X-ray picture which I told you, uh, showed you, was a two-dimensional radiotherapy which we were doing. We graduated to three-dimensional conformal radiation. Uh, we then went to intensity modulated radiotherapy, or we called IMRT. When we added imaging to it, it became IGRT, 
and then we have modern techniques like radio surgery, stereotactic radiotherapy, and stereotactic body radiation therapy. The, of course, all these techniques are in use these days in different hospitals in the country. This is a pictorial representation. The picture in the, in the top is the deep X-ray therapy machine, which was used in those days. Then we have a, you know, a earlier cobalt machine in green. On the right corner is the cobalt machine, which uh, was called uh, Theratron. It was used in most of the hospitals. Then we have the accelerators. Uh, the one on the right is like a CT scan machine. It's called uh, tomotherapy. And this uh, obnoxious looking machine on the corner is called CyberKnife. Uh, they, they, they used a robot which was used in making BMW cars and attached a linear accelerator to it and it became CyberKnife. Uh, then we have Gamma Knife, then we have an MR based linear accelerator and in the end we have a proton machine. The techniques also I said improved. The radiation beams were actually customized and uh, earlier we used to give radiation from two sides or four sides. But when the techniques improved, you see on the right, radiation came from different sides. In IMRT, we could manage, you know, if you see three, four, five, six, seven, eight beams, from two beams you can give a higher dose, from the other two beams you can give a moderate dose, from the other two beams you can give a lesser dose. So each beam of radiation could be customized. And that is possible with IMRT. And then the machine went, you know, around the patient. The patient was fixed. And you see here, the machine rotates around. The other advantage which happened was that, as I told you, that the tumors are never spherical or cylindrical. They have different shapes. And therefore, the heart of the machine is seen in the center. It is called multi-leaf collimator. And it can take any shape which the tumor has. And you see on the right, when you visualize the tumor from different sides of the body, it has different shapes. And we have the capability of shaping our radiation beam accordingly, thereby uh, keeping the normal structures out and in reducing the side effects. When we add imaging to MRT, we call it image-guided radiotherapy. We know that a lot of organs in the body, when the person is on the radiation table for about five minutes or 10 minutes, uh, they can't stop breathing the organs move and therefore when you add imaging to IMRT every day before the session you take images and you compare those images with the treatment planning image which is your zero image and you match them correct them and then you treat there are methods available where you can image the patient during treatment also and when you do that your margin around the tumor is a smaller and the normal tissues are outside the uh, high dose radiation and that reduces the side effects. This is an example of, uh, you know, uh, these techniques. Uh, this is head and neck cancer and on the right and the left, you see the, the these two. These are parotid glands. You know, earlier we treated patients in 70s and 80s, head and neck cancer, they still survive but they have no saliva in their mouth. But with these techniques, we can give a high dose to the cancer, but give a very low dose to these salivary glands. So when the patient comes later on, the cancer has gone and the saliva is very much there. This is the boon where you cure the disease as well as you, you know, the quality of life is very good. Similarly, on the, in the center, you see a brain tumor and the heart-like structure in the center is brain stem which is very, very sensitive to high dose of radiation. Brain stem has a lot of functions of the body. So if you keep the radiation to brain stem low, then your side effects are very low. And that is possible. The, the area in orange is the tumor, which is getting a very high dose. And the brain stem, you see, is green and uh, blue, which is a very low dose level. This is possible with these modern techniques. The picture on the right has three metastases in the brain. You see, they are getting high dose. The rest of the brain is free of, uh, of course, not free of radiation totally, but very, very low dose. This is a picture on the left, uh, cancer of the prostate. Prostate is in red, and the rectum, which is behind, and bladder in front are getting lower doses. This is what we do with the center image in cancer of the breast. You see, the heart and the lung is receiving a very, very low dose, whereas the tumor in red receives the maximum dose. 
the beauty of modern techniques is shown in the diagram on the right where in the same field one area is getting you know 90 gray the other is getting 65 gray so gray is the unit of radiation whereas an area which is very close by receives less than 20 gray or less than 10 gray this was never possible by techniques earlier but this is possible with the modern techniques which we use these days and this is just the data you know you see the grade 1 uh, you you look at grade 2 and grade 3 toxicities when you use imrt they are drastically low as compared to the 3d conformal radiation now let us look at whether it has helped patients or not the data coming from india is scarce but the data which has been you know uh, from us of course we also match more or less the same but the you see the death rates have gone really down over the years if you can see the uh, from 1930 to 2020 the graph on the top is the graph of lung cancer which was highest in 19 uh, 80s and 90s when smoking was there and when the smoking stopped with the modern method of treatment it has gone drastically low similarly the other cancer the death rates have gone low this is in the males on the left and right is the females if you look at the other angle that the cancer survival rates in various uh, common cancers you see them rising same is, uh, is shown on the uh, lower bar diagram where cancer death rates per 100,000 population is going down from 1970 to 2017. When we look at the Indian data, you know, the mortality trend decreased by 0.19% annually among men, increased non-significantly by 0.25% among women. This data in India, of course, is not representing the entire country, but in India we have a lot of, uh, you know, differences between the availability of uh, the, 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 the modern medicine across the country, the affordability of modern medicine by people because 70% or 80% of the people have to spend out of pocket for their treatment because the uh, government services are not uh, that uh, popular, that, uh, that common across the country. So the data is not very good but what we are seeing in uh, uh, our practice and where the facilities are available and where the patients can access those facilities the results are getting better, the death rate is going down, the survival is going up. Over the period, we are using a combination of lesser surgery, lesser chemotherapy and lesser radiation. So we are reducing the dose of radiation so that the side effects are less. Uh, medical oncologists are reducing the chemotherapy cycles because the side effects are less and surgeons are doing lesser surgery. So one of the examples is, uh, you know, Hodgkin's disease. It's, it is a lymphoma normally seen in young children. Uh, radiation used to be the only method of treatment in earlier days. And the technique was called mantle treatment. Mantle is like the warrior who wears that mantle. The field used to start from the chin and it used to go to the diaphragm and to the arms and the whole chest. The disease was cured, but these young children suffered later on. Some, you know, girls had breast cancers. Some girls had, uh, boys and girls had uh, uh, thyroid cancers. Uh, some uh, young people had uh, cardiac issues, but now, the dose which was given has been reduced to half. The area which is treated is reduced to one third or less. So the side effects are less, the, 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 the effects, the good effects are more. Similarly, in uh, breast cancer, uh, we used to, when uh, breast was removed, we used to give radiation for five weeks, now we give it for three weeks. When breast was preserved, we used to give it for six weeks, now we give it for four weeks. Prostate. The classical treatment used to be a radiation for seven and a half weeks. We now use it for four weeks. With the modern techniques, the indications have increased. Earlier, we never used to th uh, think that we can give radiation to liver or lung or, you know, to cancers which were supposed to be radio resistant. For example, melanomas, uh, hepatocellular carcinomas or renal cell carcinomas. But now with the advent of techniques like SBRT, we can treat uh, many of them. Similarly, we can treat a lot of benign tumors like meningioma, pituitary adenoma in the brain, craniopharyngiomas, acoustic neuromas, and the classical example is trigeminal neuralgia. There is a severe pain on the face. With modern, accurate radiation techniques, we give or treat or hit an area which is three to four millimeters in the brain, and we give a dose of 70 gray in one treatment.
imagine the 70 gray doors which used to be given in seven weeks is given to in one day to an area of three to four millimeter how much accuracy is required if you go here and there you will damage the brain but that is the uh, you know advantage of modern medicine the second area which has you know which is very common is re-radiation people are surviving longer and cancer comes back Earlier, with those techniques, we could not add radiation again after some time. But with these modern uh, methods, we can re-radiate twice or maybe thrice in some cases. But there are a lot of misconceptions. People, you know, get second-hand information. People get information from the media. And they think that if radiation is given, the body will become radioactive. They cannot sit with their, uh, you know, grandchildren on their lap because there is radiation coming out of the body. They think that they lose fertility. Yes, if you give radiation to the uh, ovary or testes, you lose fertility. But then uh, there are methods of preserving the semen and the ova so that they can be used later on. Uh, overdose, the pro normal tissues cannot be protected. Cancer will progress because you have not removed the cancer from the body. Surgery removes the cancer, so the cancer will not come back. That is also a myth. Here people think because the, uh, the, the organ remains in the body, uh, the cancer will come back, which is also wrong. And uh, they are to be confined during radiation to the room. We encourage people to work, go, eat, you know. Doctors also need education. You know, uh, many doctors think that radiation cannot cure. It is only for palliative treatment. And I still get references from, uh, from, from my, uh, some of my colleagues uh, who write, referred for deep X-ray therapy. Deep X-ray therapy was long been abundant, but still they write, referred for deep X-ray therapy because in the mind, uh, they think it cannot cure, it is uh, palliation. Uh, the radiation oncologists are not considered as oncologists. This is also a very, uh, you know, uh, reality of life. And uh, many of them, they don't even address as a radiation oncologist, they address as a radiotherapist. So anyway, uh, we need to educate them, that is our job. <coughs> now, uh, to end, let me take you in future. These are things which will come, which some of them have come, and some of them will come in the next 10 years. Flash therapy is one which is experimental, where the radiation will be given in one day, and it is ultra high dose rate therapy, that is, you see the last line, radiation is delivered at 40 gray per second. Whereas the present day radiation dose rate which we are using is 0.5 to 5 gray per minute. In flash, we will deliver 40 gray per second. It is said that if you finish treatment in one day instead of four weeks or six weeks, you will have a lot of capacity on your machines and the cancer cells will die more and healthy cells will be protected if you use such ultra high dose, but they're still experimental. And this is a picture, the, you know, a, a, a tumor on the nose of a cat. It's an animal experiment. And you see with flash therapy, seven months and 14 months. Protons, many of you have heard about protons. We have uh, two proton units working in the country, one in Chennai, one in Mumbai. The systems are very, very heavy. You know, they need, uh, 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 building size of the football field. The cost capital expenditure on the proton machine today is 550 to 600 crores. And therefore, the patients have to pay 35 to 45 lakhs per treatment. As the time passes, of course, uh, proton has been around for many, many years. But still, there are a lot of things to be clarified whether proton, of course, the advantage is that the beam stops at the tumor. So the tissues beyond the tumor uh, get almost negligible dose, but it does not mean that all the side effects are uh, uh, finished, they are not there, but yes, it is having less side effects and mostly people are using it for uh, uh, childhood cancers where the growth and uh, you know other things have to be uh, preserved. They are using it in re-radiation, newer indications are coming, but more and more studies are required to uh, proton to become the main line treatment and the cost of the equipment has to reduce, the, the, the size of the machine has to reduce so that the proton can become the mainstream uh, treatment in the next few years. So let us see uh, where it happens. We have MR Linux and uh, MR Linux are there. We have one in India at the present time. Uh, at the present machines, we are using CT scan along with linear accelerator. But 
when you use MR along with linear accelerator, the visualization is much better, the movement of tumors is much better, but then you have to plan every time the thing changes and they, that takes a longer time on the machine. But now with AI coming, artificial intelligence coming, probably that time will be reduced and MR Linux may become uh, or replace CT Linux in due course of time. Then we have a combination of PET along with Linux. Then we have synthetic CT for MRI. We have to do CT scan for radiotherapy planning and MRI also for planning. Uh, without CT, we cannot plan a radiation treatment. So this technique, we will do an MRI and then convert it into a CT so that the radiation dose is less to the patient and the cost is also less. So this is a work in progress. Artificial intelligence is coming in a big way and it will reduce a lot of time in radiation treatment planning and we are really looking forward to it. Uh, you heard something about immunotherapy, what wonders it is doing and uh, radiotherapy also actually alters the immunity and if radiotherapy is combined with immunotherapy, we are expecting the results to be very good, but then we will have to wait and see. So I think I have been able to tell you the progress which has taken place, what we are seeing in the next 10 years. So before I close, I want to reiterate that radiation therapy has an important place in the treatment of cancer. Modern radiation therapy is accurate, targeted, and has minimal side effects. Modern machines cannot compensate for the experience of the radiation oncology. This is very, very important. I get a lot of patients in my clinic, and the one question which many of them ask me is, aapke paas kaun si machine hai? Which is, you know, it is very difficult to answer. Most, I tell them, most of the hospitals have good machines, most of the hospitals have good doctors, but a machine can be as good as the person who operates it. So this is also very important. And finally, radiation therapy is here to stay and don't be afraid of radiation therapy because it does a lot of good to the body. Of course, there are a few side effects, but as we travel uh, in next five to 10 years, those side effects will also go down and we'll have better cure rate. These are some of the examples I have given where radiotherapy is used as curative and a supportive treatment, but there are a number of areas where radiation is still successful. So I hope I have been able to pass on the message and thank you very much for your attention.